All right, so we are recording the session um, and we will go ahead and we'll get started. So besides going over the settings, this is kind of a talk everyone have been utilizing the device, would like to know what specific questions or things to review so I can better address these concerns or questions that you have or how to utilize what filter, et cetera. Um, so I want this to kind of be like a, like a team effort, but I'm gonna help guide and assist along the way. Um, so who would like to start or does anyone have a shout out on what uh, you would like me to review? Well, I'll just get started and I'll just start from the beginning. Um, and then I will not be able to see anyone. So please interrupt me if you have any questions or wanna go over anything in specific, okay? Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. All right. All right, can everyone see this? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect, thank you. All right, so I know that we all have seen that there's presets for their devices. So the presets, P is pigment, V is vascular. Now the presets starting off with Luvo, kind of how I created these parameter guides was because a lot of people were not seeing the clinical endpoint appropriately using the presets. So what happened was I took the Clarions, it's like number one trainers in Canada that have been utilizing this device, mixed with treatment parameters that I have gotten great success on and condensed it all and created this treatment parameter guide. So pigment and vascular, it is something that you can utilize. However, you might not get the best results. Um, Clarion is coming out with a book and that book is gonna have tips and tricks um, associated with the IPL, which is great because a lot of devices, they just have here you go and good luck. So we're trying to utilize, since this is a very strong device, um, you have a lot, you can, you can utilize this device as a provider. So you have so much to manipulate and so much to control that it can be the best confusing thing for you. So with this IPL, whenever one thing, so I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go over this, you always want clear ultrasound gel. I've had a lot of people ask me, can you use the blue? No, we're using a visible light spectrum and you want to have clear ultrasound gel so then it can really tell the indication you are trying to treat without heating up the outside tissue. Okay, so clear ultrasound gel, a millimeter to two millimeters is much needed. Okay, um, the spot reducers. So the spot reducers, the treatment parameters are based on the larger crystal. Whenever you're using a spot reducer to meet that demand of the larger crystal, you need to start with your fluence increase two to four joules before you meet that demand of the larger crystal. And you always need gel in between that larger crystal and that spot reducer as well. So that's really important because what can happen if you do not have gel in between that large and small reducer is that it can actually burn a patient. Now this treatment protocol, and again, if anyone has questions, please just interrupt me. I'm not able to see you. So just please let me know. Whenever you are treating someone, you always wanna hit the deeper nanometer filter first, then go more superficial. So a visible light spectrum, whenever you're treating, some people get confused on this. So you have between 400 and 1200 nanometers. Now, whenever you put the filter in, most of the energy is delivered at that nanometer that you choose. Everything below it, meaning the larger numbers, 
are being diffused, are being used. Everything above that in the shorter nanometer range is not, okay? So that's why, it one, it's safer for darker skin types or safer for someone that has a lot of skin um, conditions happening, okay? When you go deeper, you can go up on your nanometers to target more of that epidermal junction, that epidermal layer, to get that pigmented lesions. So you can use up to three filters, okay? One pass, but you always want to start deeper. A lot of the times that deeper can also treat what you're trying to get more superficially. And yes, you can use those three filters in one treatment. Okay. So you want your patient, if you're not seeing a response, some, some providers get a little bit nervous, right? Because IPL does not have the best, the best, um, how should I say it? Um, a lot of people are scared of it because a lot of people get burned, okay? That is because one, they use numbing cream. Two, they do not communicate with their client and that is the most important thing. You want the patient to walk out like they've had something done. You want them to be pink. You want them to feel like they have a sunburn. And, you know, you want them, especially treating pigmented lesions, you want them to look like, my, like my little saying is light up like a Christmas tree, okay? You want to see that dark pigmented lesions. For any type of redness, okay, any vascular lesions, you want them to be purple or smudging or you want blanching associated with that, okay? If you get, especially your vascular patients like rosacea, moderate to severe, if you get immediate purpura, that means your energy is too high. If you get purpura that slowly develops up until the end of the treatment, that is absolutely normal, and that purpura can last two to three days, even longer than that, okay? Now, the four, anyone have questions on that? Oh, someone's trying to access inside. Okay, here we go. Um, so I can see everyone. Does anyone have any questions in regarding to like multiple filters, um, utilizing the spot reducer? Yeah, I have a question. So mm -hmm. when people come in with two concerns, they have like pigment. Um, it's like poikloderma or if they have redness, then do we just do one treatment for the pigment and then just have them come back for another treatment for the redness? It's not as effective if we do both in one visit. Is that what I'm understanding? Um, so absolutely. So the best one for um, poikloderma and pigment is your 585. You want them to, to almost have a purpley hue to their skin. Now, you could also do a 585, but you can also do a 560 on top of it for the superficial blood vessels. That's going to be your go-to for superficial blood vessels and superficial pigment. Your 585 is going to go deeper, so you always want to go to that deeper one. Then you can come back and you can specifically target any of those vessels left over with the 560 in one treatment. They're, they're going to look like they've been beaten up. <laughs> they're going to be, they're, they're going to be swollen. Um, but, you know, treating those blood vessels are a little difficult and it's going to take more than one treatment, but that 585 first and then that 560 on top of it can make a huge difference. How about if they're very, um, erythematous without any poikloderma if like they're it's rosacea and it's bad it's erythematolingectatic so we just do a 585 for that one mm -hmm. we add a yes and they're white they're like very light you know type one or two do we do a a, a deep one and then a 430 yeah so so your 430 is going to be definitely going to be the best for that superficial pigmentation that is very stubborn. 
Now your 560, you can do your 560 or your 515. So if you notice the vessels are really, really at that surface, even a 515 can target that, even though that's your pigment go-to, that 515, if you add enough heat to that, it will target that. Now for the facial flushing, you actually get more of a result when you use a deeper filter like the 585 or the 640. Usually facial flushing, yeah, usually facial flushing, I use my 585. And you'll notice like the IPL has a delay. You'll notice that the whole area like on the side of the face will be really pink, right? Especially the facial flushing. And then all of a sudden you'll see it just come down to this one little bunch on the cheek. And that's a really good en uh, clinical endpoint. And you might have a little bit of purpura, especially those moderate to, to severe rosacea patients. Another thing too, for vascular, um, even for pigment, another, the post care, a little trick of the trade is using vinegar soaks. I know that I have taught some of you on applying straight distilled vinegar that actually absorbs and takes that heat out. So I'll have patients that will have a very strong histamine response. I will apply vinegar if that doesn't cause any irritation. Sometimes you might have to, it's really good to have cortisone cream in your back pocket so then you can apply cortisone cream as well to bring that histamine reaction down. And that's also really good for the vascular lesions as well. Um, but because some people, some people get a little nervous, but vinegar, um, cortisone cream, and an ice pack, and it will bring them down immediately. Now, oh, and that's a great question. So acne, that 430 filter. It targets the, that bacteria on the skin. You can do a treatment every two weeks if you're trying to target acne. Now with acne, you're not going to see any crazy tissue reaction. You're not going to see much with that. What it's doing is it's just targeting that bacteria, right? It's in the 400 range. Um, that, the, that bacteria is very superficial. Now another little trick to this is you can definitely do it on pigmented lesions, especially the light brown spots on the hands, even the chest. So as we know, our 515 is our wonderful and my favorite pigmented filter. You could do that and then you can come back with your 430 and target the stubborn pigmented lesions with that as well. Um, it works great with that combination and you would actually utilize the same settings that we have here you might want to bring your pulse down just a little bit more um so usually like you can do a 15 and a 15 is pretty good with that for some reason that seems to be the go-to if you're doing hands you can even drop your milliseconds down even more to about a four milliseconds with a 12 fluence that right there that setting i just said is also surprisingly great for hemangiomas. Weirdly enough, it treats this filter of 430 with your square or your circle spot reducer, your four milliseconds, again, your four milliseconds and your 12 to 13 fluence works well for your hemangiomas. Okay, usually they'll turn ashy gray the first treatment sometimes if they're a little bit larger you might have to do a little bit more treatments if you if if you notice that it's larger and it's deeper you can do either your 560 then come back with your 430 so then you're treating deep and then you're coming back to to do that superficial okay now Pigmented lesions, um, has anyone treated like a lot of forearms or on the body? Yeah, we treated Mary Beth when you were here. Yeah, remember? yes, yep. Yeah. So she, she had some striping. So striping can happen based on pressure. Um, no matter how many pulses you do, it just can happen. So you wanna make sure you let the patient know. The forearm is going, is right? It's super thin. So you want to drop your settings down by at least by two 
like around two to four joules. Okay. So you want to keep that in mind. You always want to treat each section as it's brand new. So you never want to do on the face, like what you'll do on the chest. Okay. So usually the neck and the chest, it's thinner skin. You have to really pay attention to that tissue response. Now, if you have someone that has those reds and browns, and you've noticed that the reds are very superficial, your 560 is your go-to filter because that's going to not only treat the superficial telangiectasias, but it's also gonna treat some of that pigment as well, okay? If you need to come back, you can come back with that 515. And remember, you can even come back with that five or that with the 430. So you have all those options. Now, I know seeing the pulse type, so, I've had a couple, it, this chart can be a little bit confusing, but you have your skin type to the left. This is your pulse type, okay? We have toning treatment and toning prep. Now, some people get confused, what is the toning prep? The toning prep is actually, so to get this, to get this accepted by Clarion, by the actual manufacturers and, um, and everyone that does treatments, their prep, they are taught, um, they teach people there's a toning preparation. Now, the toning is that one that looks like the four, four different lines on the actual device. They, these are very light. As you can see, it has a smaller millisecond pulse duration with a lower fluence. This, patients might not feel much, okay? The whole reason for the prep is anyone that's coming in has a lot going on never had a treatment before or you have someone new at your practice learning this device this heats up the skin to allow the tissue to respond instead of just hitting it with heat okay so this actually preps the skin allows it to warm up so then if you do come in more aggressively there's less risk and less adverse reaction chances okay so this is a lot lighter. This is the actual toning treatment. So toning, you when you actually, a patient, and I don't know if anyone has tried it on themselves, but a toning almost feels like little, little skips in the skin and you can actually feel it compared to a single pulse. So a toning is almost like you're single. However, this creates little sub pulses so it's a lot more comfortable for the client. This also is safer for your darker or your tanner skin types. It has a longer delayed tissue reaction than all the other pulse types on here. But it is effective. Sometimes if I'm treating a darker skin type, um, like I've treated a skin type 5, I use a toning. And then I'll give it a little bit and then I'll actually come in, take my filters and be very specific on my target. It allows the patient's skin to have a good tissue response without causing the risk. Okay. Toning, it also depends. I will say pulse type one, it goes a lot quicker then pulse type two, three, and toning, okay? So I know that we talked about speed a little bit earlier. Um, I'll find out more information about going from a 1.5 hertz to a two hertz, and I'll know next week I am going to Canada um, to do a little bit more in-depth treatments and kind of get response with the manufacturers. And so I'll find out more information if they have the new device upgrade for the two hertz. So then everyone can get an upgrade to be able to go a little bit faster. But you can do a treatment faster in pulse type one than you can with three because of that energy delay. On here, um, like all devices, just because a device is preset doesn't mean that it's correct on all devices. So this, Yes, Lauren. Lauren, you can talk. You're mute.
Did you have a question? Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Sorry, no, I, I, got kicked, I got kicked out for a second. <laughs> I, no, you're fine. I, I was curious to know if when we treat with the toning pulse type, and mm -hmm. we were treated will it take longer like for our treatments let's say if we only did single for one patient and it would take let's say four treatments would it take more treatments over time if we're treating on toning only good question um nope not at all so what will what will take longer is if you don't see that clinical indication that you're trying to treat so okay. that clinical endpoint. So if you're trying to treat that pigment, um, what happens if you always want to go at least, so you always manipulate your fluids first, two to three times by two, then you decrease your milliseconds. And when you decrease your milliseconds, the snappier it's going to be. So a rule of thumb, you should always start. And that's why it, I actually made it this way is because you wanna start on those longer milliseconds and start on that lower heat, right? The joules is what's gonna cause an issue. Um, but you, on average, that toning, you it's gonna be a little bit longer of a delay, but it, you should get the same results as a pulse type one. However, a pulse type one is gonna be stronger. So you're gonna see that tissue reaction a little bit sooner and it's gonna be a little hotter. Thank you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Now, you can also change the cooling on your system. So if you, I'll have more information on how to set the default on your device, but you can actually go in, so if you touch the temp, you can bring the temperature down. When you bring that temperature down and you hit ready mode, then the device starts cooling. Unfortunately, until we can change that default, when you hit standby, the cooling will go back to that default set temperature. Usually, if you have someone that is very, that skin is just really hot, um, someone that has blood vessels or someone that has a lot of pigment, we want to bring that cooling at max five degrees celsius when you're sitting at a zero to negative five you have less of a histamine response of a tissue and it's more comfortable for the patient you'll notice that the gel will actually start to crystallize as well when you change your cooling on your device one thing to make sure is that you pay attention to when you need to fill it up because the colder you get, the more of that water needs to run through, through that chilling system. And then, so then you're gonna run out of water a little bit sooner than just normally keeping it on that 12 to 14 degree default. If you have a tanner or darker skin type patient and you're treating vascular lesions, you always wanna make sure that their skin is cold and treat that vascular lesion. And then you can post cold as well. Okay, that is just to minimize the, the surrounding heat on that tissue um, that you're not wanting to treat. Sometimes when you go into that superficial telangiectasia, which is going to be your 560 filter, you'll notice that you'll have to bring your milliseconds down. So usually those, those telangiectasias around the nose, sometimes you have to have your heat at around 16 degrees. Um, 16 to 18 if you're using that spot reducer and having your milliseconds sitting around 10 to 12. Okay, sometimes even less than that. Now the hands, I will say you can beat the hands up. <laughs> you really can. So don't be afraid to beat the hands up. They're pretty stubborn. Usually I do a 515 and I always follow up with a 430. So um, a lot of people know, you know, the, the dye hand piece, but 585 is really good for your darker, moderate to severe rosacea, your facial flushing, your polycloderma, um, your overall vascular is going to be your 585. Your 560 is going to be your superficial telangiectasias 
And this is also going to treat pigmented lesions as well. Technically, this is your pigmented lesions filter for superficial telangic, sorry, superficial latigines, okay, on darker skin types. Sorry for the clicking if you guys can hear that. Testing devices over here. All right, so 640. The 640 is really good if you have clients that are coming in for an acne treatment that have those, um, um, so cystic acne. So that 640 almost touches down into that sebaceous glands. Okay, so 640 is really good. 640 is my overall toning. I do use toning with a 640 to warm up the tissue if someone is pretty dark and they have a lot of things going on. I always do a 640. You would be surprised because a 640 can bring a lot up to the surface. And I really don't, whenever I'm doing like a skin prep, okay, not this one, but an actual treatment, I don't really focus on my spot reducer. I just do a quick pass all over. And then by the time I'm done, I come back and specifically target things. What's been my go to for pigment? has been a 515. I set it at pulse type one. Whenever I do pigment, I really like to just get it, right? I really want a response and I want to see it pretty quick. So I'll do a pulse type one. So this is my go-to. Pulse type one, 15 milliseconds, and a 15 joules. These are for my skin type one through three. 515 you can absolutely use on darker skin types. I don't have it on here, but that comes with experience. So if you think about it, 15 milliseconds, if you're treating a skin type 4, you usually want to sit at around 9 joules. Okay. On the chest, usually I sit around a 13, and I'll even reduce that when I'm going over the clavicle. The clavicle is, is one area that people really get into trouble and cause blistering. So you really want to rotate that bony promise. And it's just, it's very, very thin skin. So all you need to do is just reduce that energy just a little bit more. Because what happens is I've seen a lot of blisters happen right where that, right where that cupping is. Okay, so you really want to make sure that the crystal touches. Um, 515, usually for the hands, if I need more heat, I will keep my pulse at 15 milliseconds. But if I want to be snappier, I usually sit at a 4, 4 milliseconds and a 12, 12 joules for the hands. And then I usually do a 430. And my 430, I'll do a pulse type 1. And I'll sit at 15 milliseconds and around 15 joules. Whenever you're doing a treatment on someone, I always want them to feel like they've had a sunburn. I know that sounds torturous, <laughs> but I want them to feel some heat. I want to see that the erythema. Okay. I've even had, I don't know if everyone has seen the before and afters of that, um, of the man that I did, he had two treatments and it is okay if the patients have swelling. Okay. He was actually swollen, especially underneath his eyes for about three days. That is completely normal. That's just a really, really good histamine response. And his treat, his treatment outcomes were phenomenal. He's got baby skin now and now I've only done two treatments. Okay. Is anyone doing permanent hair reduction with this IPL? Yes. Okay. Um, how have your results been? Okay. Okay, good. Awesome. Usually, so rarely would you ever, I'm going to stop presenting. Um, usually would you ever do a triple pulse? when you're doing an actual IPL for pigmented lesions and vascular lesions, but that triple pulse is really good for permanent hair reduction. Have you been doing a lot of triple pulse? No, mostly one pulse. 
Oh, mostly one pulse. Okay. Okay. And you, everyone's been handling it just fine. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so just in case if you don't have anyone that's handling it okay, that triple pulse seems to be super effective. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that 700 is really good for the fine light hair. 755 is really good for that dark hair. Okay. Um, you want to smell it and you want to see it. That's singe. All right. So four settings. I mean, does anyone have like a story or does anyone have any questions as far as did you have a patient? Do you have any questions that I can answer? Um, I'm here for you. So. I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to also like the speed of treating them, I've heard you mention a lot that you've done like one pass and then you come back and you spot treat. So would you say that when you're treating mm -hmm. a patient, you don't necessarily need to do three full passes, you know, like over the skin or would you do like one pass and then come in and spot treat the specific areas for, you know, I don't know if that made sense or not, but. Yeah. Yeah. No, it totally makes sense. Um, so that's actually a really good question. So for instance, if I were to have a patient, say, say I'm doing like a 515, um, that's my pigment go-to. So I'm doing a 515 and their skin, let's just say their skin's pink. The pigmented lesions are a little bit dark, but nothing crazy. That's when I'll actually go in for a second pass, but I never do more than two passes on the same filter. Now, if someone, so for instance, say I do a 560 and there's some sections that are just really not lit up, but there's other ones that are really lit up, I will actually automatically switch to my 515 filter and I will target those specifically. Thank you. Yeah. To give you an example, the highest I've ever gone with a spot reducer for my energy is 26 joules. Wow. That, the Lucent IPL can go 40, but I've never had to go past a 26. So if you see, so like the rule of thumb too, so whenever you're doing a treatment on someone, say for instance, you're doing a 560, and you're, you're trying to figure out, you know, they have a lot going on on the chest. And I'm so sorry, my face is really shiny. I just noticed that. Um, they have a lot of stuff going on with the chest and you do your 560 and you're not seeing much. And she's a skin type three, okay? And you up your energy, say you up your energy by two. Um, so you're sitting at a 15 and then a 17, right? Automatically right there, that's pretty high. They should have a reaction. If they're just getting pinkness and you're not seeing that, clinical endpoint for that pigment lesion automatically switch to a more superficial filter. That's also going to help you with your 515 and your 430, which one you want to use. So you can use your 515, but we've all been there where we've had that stubborn brown spot on that client and it's just not budging. That's when you go to that 430. And I mean, you can hit it multiple times. Don't be afraid to do that. If the patient has a sunburn, um, or if they're, you know, if they're not burning. So the best thing is to say, have you ever been burned with a curling iron, a hot stove, a flat iron? Everyone knows what that feels like. Everyone's been burned by one of those. Um, that initial heat and how it just lingers, it stays the same, is what you do not want. However, they're going to feel like a rubber band snap, and they're also going to feel that heat sensation, but it's the difference between those two. So understanding and having that communication with your client, you can hit that spot, crank up your energy by four. It's absolutely okay. Okay. Um, now for darker skin types, so say, let's say like a skin type four. Um, if someone has, so if someone has PIH, if someone has PIH and they're a darker skin type, if they are really prone to PIH, it's really good to get them on a cream before you IPL them because that means that they are just very sensitive to that heat response. Their melanin sites don't like it. 
So a combo cream is really good. Have them on it at least four to six weeks. Usually you can do like a 4% hydroquinone. Um, you can do a 0.09 tretinoin um, with kojic acid and tricinolone. Um, that's a really good combo compounding cream. And that prevents them from having the PIH, have them stop it at least like a week to two weeks and then do a treatment. And then they can get back onto it, the remaining. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to, IPL has a lot of heat. So a lot of people think you can also treat melasma. You really can't. You can treat it once with an IPL. But if you treat them again, that's when you're going to get into trouble because it'll automatically just turn right back around and be super angry at you. So um, can you treat someone with melasma? You're better off with an herbium or a thulium um, com like combination treatments. Yes, you can treat them with an IPL, but you need to give them a combo cream first, stop their melanocytes, IPL them, then do you need you need combo treatments a q switch an erbium a thulium any one of those okay darker skin types for pih if they do have pigmented lesions you can absolutely treat them with a 585 um a 560 is going to treat those superficial pigmented lesions as well okay um you do want to see that clinical endpoint with the darker skin types but you want to be you want to be super cautious and talk to them about how they're feeling. Yes, Dr. McCauley. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you a question. Another physician mm -hmm. who has um, the levolucent said um, that it's kind of a pain to put on the spot reducer, and so what what he has done is just use some wet gauze, kind of with a hole in it. Um, you know, to go after those lesions. Have you done anything like that? Or do you think that's a okay idea or? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, and then, um, absolutely. So another thing too, is that if you have the, the screw on spot reducers, it should just get them a little snug to where you can take them off and on. And that ultrasound gel will keep them, keep them secure. But another little trick is you can go to the dollar store, you can get white foam and you can cut out that white foam and you can use that even. Um, but absolutely you can use gauze, fold it up. You don't even need to get it wet. Okay. What, what kind of mm -hmm. white foam? Um, you can get, and actually, if you give me one second, I'll grab an example. Oh, <laughs> let me, like, here you go. You might need my face in there. Um, so these you can get off of Amazon. Um, you only need them to be just, just a couple of millimeters thickness. Okay. Um, but this white foam is awesome. It's a good little trick. Uh, you can also do a popsicle stick, but anything white, the device is not attracted to it. It has no pigment. Um, so absolutely, I've done treatments where I have that white gauze or I have a piece of this foam and I'll cover half or how much I need from that IPL. So for instance, if you were to, if you were to grab something white, I'm just going to use these little sticky eye shields, and you put something white right here and you go ahead and treat, absolutely you're fine. Okay, good you, trick. Thanks. You, yeah, you can even, and I've done it with tattoo removal. Um, what people don't want to get removed, I even have a white pencil and I'll actually color in that area that they don't want treated and the device is not attracted to white. Okay. Okay. Um, it's just like a little safety guard as well for that. Um, but no, absolutely, that's, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, if anyone has like a nose ring, you can just tape over it. Um, I love, I love using disposable eye shields for IPLs 
because I can get really close to the eye. I can take them off. I can scoop up the eye. I can pull and I can treat right there at that lash line. If you were to use intraocular shields, um, you can use metal or plastic, but you're better off with metal ones if you were to do that. Now I notice we have about 15 minutes. Are there any other questions I can answer? Oh, if you do have a darker skin type, four and above, another great thing is going um, a 640, doing a toning and getting a little bit of that tissue reaction and then treating them accordingly from there. But anyone that has PIH, they're going to need, they're going to need that combination and a cream afterwards. I see we have a question. Yes, I have a question for the laser, for the hair removal settings. Mm -hmm. uh, I find myself usually uh, needing to go over two times. Is this two passes basically? Is this normal? Should I do one pass and with uh, more fluence or is it okay if I do two passes? With an eye, I mean, even with diodes, it's okay if you do two passes if you're starting to notice that. Okay. Now, if you're, is it what area of the body is it usually at? It happens a bit everywhere legs, bikini. Okay. And the reason why I, I feel I need to do two passes is because I don't see clinical endpoints, I don't see the redness around the follicles. Oh, okay, but that second pass shows you? Yes. Okay, so you might have to, one, increase your energy. If they feel too much heat, you might have to do that, the, um, the second pulse type. Okay. The reason for that is because you're still getting one pulse. That second pulse type actually adds a lingering heat to it, so then it puts more heat onto that hair follicle to get that follicle. Okay, so basically should I do one pass uh, with uh, the two pulses and then the second pass with one pulse? I would, if you're not getting it from that, that double pulse, see if you can get it from that double pulse or that triple pulse. But if you're not getting that, then, um, then what you're doing is absolutely fine. Okay, good. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, this is Divya. I'm sorry. I, I came in a little bit later, so I'm not sure. If oh, you yeah, you're fine. I talked about this, but um, I, I've had some pretty good success with the pigment, but I've like, you know, with the patchy erythema, I've still kind of had trouble kind of figuring out like what's a good setting. Um, and that like rosacea patient where it's not like just blood vessels, because I feel like I have good settings for the blood vessels that are thicker, but not really as much of like that, that redness, if that makes any sense. I'm not sure what your tips are for that. Yeah. So, so what filter are you using? So I usually would start, um, I know you talked about doing like the like mm -hmm. the initial pass. So I usually start with um, like the 585 and then I go down okay. to the 360 for the treatment okay. pass. Okay. And it's more of that diffuse redness? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and that that is a little hard because that one has when you use the diffuse redness. So what it, what usually is your settings for your 585 for that? Uh, I wish I could tell you. I don't have that on in front of me right oh, now. It's so okay. It's yeah, okay. Okay. So those patients, um, you might need a longer heat duration. Okay. You okay. either need more energy or you might need a longer heat duration. So what happens with that, what clinical endpoint you want to see is you want shrinkage of that area. So it might be a little bit more red right here, and then it's going to start diffusing, almost blanching to that cheek area. Um, so you want to you want to see that endpoint. If you're just getting it and it's not red or say for instance if it blanches and then comes back, that means you need to apply more heat on that area cuz you didn't coagulate it long enough. Got it. Okay. So mm -hmm. so again for the patch here you're saying to do basically longer pulse as well as increase the energy. Mm -hmm. And if the end point we're looking for is actually blanching with those or because I know sometimes it gets redder too. So I'm not sure, I guess, what to look for in those cases. Yeah, absolutely. So it can be either or. So it's okay. going to be like, it's either going to look like a red, like a red section. Okay. Um, or you'll notice that it gets really red and then it starts to blanch into a focal area. Okay. Okay. So I haven't seen that yet. So I'm not sure 
Um, okay, so it's and great I guess, when it happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure I had clearly haven't gotten the right settings for that. But um, so, what would you suggest would be like a good starting point to kind of go up or down from for like a test spot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, what what skin type? Uh, let's say skin type one or two, because it's usually those that I find that that's like where they have mostly redness and not really the pigment. So, gotcha. Okay. Um, so usually I would start, so your pulseration can go pretty high. Um, so your fluence, I like to start at like a 14 or 16, okay. start with your 15 milliseconds. If you haven't reached that increase your milliseconds first. So I'd go from like even all the way up to 20. So if you're not okay. seeing much increase it to 20. Okay. Um, from there, that might be the patient where you might need a double pulse. Okay. okay. Rarely do I use double pulse, but sometimes double pulse is needed for that vasculature. Okay. Just to extend. It, yeah. Is I think. It, what you're it, trying to say. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. It's where you turn down your milliseconds when you're going more superficial. Got okay. It. okay. When you're going deeper, you need to increase that heat for a longer period of time. If you're going superficial, you need to decrease your heat because then that heat will bypass that vessel. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the, the redness too. So if you have someone that has a lot of telangiectasias and you notice that it's coming up to the eye, I will say if you actually treat around the eye first, a lot of the cheek concerns will go away. Oh, and Okay, interesting. Okay, I'll try that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, Chip, just a question. Um, we don't even have our machine yet. We've ordered it. So these may be basic questions for How some exciting. of you. How exciting. Yes. Um, but can you just go a little bit more into the pulse types? I know you've already said that you do the toning for darker skin first. Mm -hmm. Is there ever an instance that you would do toning for a type 1 or a type 2? And then also in the pulse types, I'm gathering that the type one is a one, all the energy in one pulse, whereas two is it's divided into two and three, it's divided into three. Is that correct? That is correct in that concept, except one thing that double pulse, it's not two flashes, it's one flash. Okay. So you're creating a delay where almost that heat, and you'll notice it when you start treating someone. Um, the first is going to be really quick and snappy. When you do a double pulse, you actually see that that light stays there and lingers for longer. And same with the triple. And then the toning is one pulse. However, it's kind of a, I wouldn't say it's like pulse type two. It's a little faster than pulse type two, but not as fast as a pulse type one. And the patients can actually feel kind of like a little, almost electrical impulses on the skin. So your pulse type two is really good for that, that stubborn vasculature. Um, we're going to have a little bit more advanced settings with those, the pulse type two and three, but the, the double pulse, the triple pulse is rarely used unless you're doing ha permanent hair reduction. Um, it's, it's too weak. We're creating advanced settings though, to utilize those higher jewels. But until then it's just too weak right now. Um, your double pulse though, cause you have to meet that energy. So say for instance, if you have 12 joules, um, your 12 joules, you have your milliseconds and you have your delay. So say for instance, if it's seven milliseconds, that's usually what the device defaults to and 20 delay. What that means is it's too fast for the eye to see, but you're delivering the heat quickly with a longer time in between it delivering the same heat quickly and it's all delivered within those 12 joules. Mm -hmm. So that is really good for vasculature. Um, I'm a double, I'm a single pulse person and a toning person. I beat people up safely. <laughs> um, I want to see something happening now. Um, usually rarely do I do go into my double pulse, but that is if I'm, if I'm having someone with that facial flushing, if they're being a little bit more stubborn, it's also for patient comfort too. Okay. So, the, so you're saying when you like to beat someone up, 
that if you've got someone who is type one or type two who's got some brown spots and you're like i'm going to get these you will tone first and then you hit them with a type one i will actually hit them with a 515 pulse type one and usually 15 and 15 is my settings okay yep with the toning first or not with what i'm sorry with toning first or not nope i will okay. use toning if someone has a lot going on and i'm and i'm sure we've seen those people where like they've not ever been out of the sun they got red they got brown they almost look like they have a mask going on their skin type two but they look like they're almost a skin type four you know what i'm talking about those really especially on the chest that's when you can if there's no reds you can absolutely do a toning because a lot of that stuff will come up and then you can do that single pulse and you can do it with the same filter mm -hmm. absolutely you can safely heat up the tissue with a little bit longer of a delay with that toning and then you can come back and be more aggressive with your single pulse with that same filter great thank you so just to yeah. um, kind of, um, jump on that. So you said that you do 15, 15 yep. with the 515 pigment, or sorry, for the 515 filter with the, for the pigment. And that's mm -hmm. like starting kind of like test spot type of thing. And you kind of go from there. Is that what I'm understanding you say? Yeah. I, um, with the, so with the toning, if you have someone that's lit up, because if you come straight in with a 515, they're going to have a crazy histamine reaction. They might just overreact more than you want them to. And what can happen is when they overreact and they have a lot going on and you just beat them up, what happens is they can actually peel. Sure. And you can have a really bad risk. So you can do a toning in that same filter. Always do a test spot. Anytime you're changing a filter, changing your settings, you always do a test spot. Absolutely. Um, or, you know, a lot of times too is um, if someone just has that pigment, they don't have anything crazy, but they're skin type one and two, and they just have quite a bit of pigment going on, um, I will just go straight to my single pulse. Now, also too, if someone so has fast, freckles. So is that what you meant that you would start like a 15, 15? Oh, um, on yes, those that's my go-to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that's yeah. like for like, a, again, for like more like a type one to just pigment kind of not too much. And three. Going on. And three. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and then, uh, cause th I'm just curious. Cause I, I do like more, I tend to do 10, 15 and I've had pretty reasonable results with that, but I figure the 15 is a bit obviously warmer. So do you prepare them for kind of having quite a bit of, you know, redness or what do you prepare them in terms of like, what, what are your end results usually or end points, I guess, with that? Yeah. So my end, po end points are, are pretty red. Um, okay. They're pretty red. They're pretty lit up and I can actually show you a photo. Um, they get pretty, they get pretty dark. So okay. I like to see a lot happening um, right at the first treatment. So in every single treatment, technically. Um, so let me find so i like to say I an idea like how to prepare them because i feel like they're already pretty beat up when i do that and if i go up higher with the, the milliseconds i can imagine it's going to be even a bit more so just trying to get an idea of what what to prepare yeah, it's them gonna for be a little gonna be bit, they could absolutely so they can have some swelling um they're going to feel more like a sunburn but usually patients are around like a four out of 10 discomfort when they leave the office. So I have them sit there with an ice pack. With that heat, you can have a little bit more of a histamine response, um, sure. that swelling, that almost rashy looking appearance. But I, you know, I want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so here is, Sorry. Why well, I find this? Um, oh, here's a patient that has some purpura. Let me see if I can get my visual effects off. <laughs> so this is someone that has really good purpura. She's a rosacea patient. Oh, uh, okay. Can you guys see yes. that? Yeah. Yes. This is right after, not exactly right after the treatment, but this was a gradual. This is completely normal, especially for rosacea patients. 
Okay. Okay. Um, she had a significant change just from that. Um, this is, let's see here. Um, I've had patients swollen. I know that we talked about that. Um, but patients can be really swollen after a treatment. I've even had someone, you can do combination treatments. I love combination treatments. So I love doing an IPL and then going, so an IPL straight into a, an erbium, a tholium, even a CO2. Okay. I love those combination treatments and I'll do them the same day. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to find this one photo for you. Um, has anyone done combination treatments? I have not, no. They are the best. <laughs> um, absolutely love it. Um, now here is, also here is an example of, this is pretty mild but she's pretty red. Okay. Okay. So that was her. This was the next day and she was, she was swollen. Okay. So you can see she has swelling underneath her eyes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so you do want this this is an example when you want that darkened pigment lesions, they're going to have a reddish hue. Okay. Even if it's an area that you think they don't have pigment, you can tell that a lot just showed up. Yeah. Okay. So, so that mm -hmm. second picture was immediately after? Yeah, this was the next day. Oh, it was the next day. Okay. Okay. So you can see the swelling underneath her eyes. Right, right. She had great results. She was a little nervous of that swelling, but if someone has swelling, they can take an antihistamine, so like a Zyrtec even. She okay. didn't need any steroids. Okay. Um, they can take a Zyrtec, a Benadryl. If they take a lot of antihistamines, you can also do a Pepsid. That's a little trick of the trade, right? Um, okay. So, um, and that, that erythema, that's absolutely total normal response. Um, and you want that darkening. This was a good, to give me an example, I'm sure you guys have seen this, but this is a good, that was a week after the second treatment. Okay, yeah. So one thing with IPL, IPL cannot treat freckles. Um, it is, freckles are hereditary, they come back. The only way to treat those is if you were to do a Q-switch that uses like a sonic, type of um, type of energy that will actually change the molecular structure of the freckle. Um, there's like a whole high tech, high tech thing on it. But what can happen is those freckles, it's hard to differentiate between the freckles and the pigmented lesions, but you can treat someone with freckles. A lot will come up, but some can come back over time. But as an IPL, right, we always need maintenance every six months, once a year, however you want. Um, so with freckles, it's just teaching that patient, kind of educating them that there's a possibility that it can come back. A little trick too, you can use a 560 for light colored bruising. You can also use a 585 for dark bruising. Usually you want your milliseconds at around six, you do a single pulse, um, and your energy is delivered. You, it's really good to start at a 12. Um, for the IPL, you can start at a 12, and this is for the spot reducer. And what you want to see is darkening of that. Um, it's, sometimes you don't see much, but you'll see darkening of that bruising. And then what it does is it will eventually fade within a few hours. Now, it can take more than one treatment, but it reduces dramatically that and you can have like a little bit of arnica cream arnica cream is always good for the skin and and the mental <laughs> aspect of bruising but um but the 560 is really good of, um for light and the 585 is good for the dark and those are about the same settings for both filters 
you always want to have a low milliseconds and a low heat. Was this helpful at all? Maybe. Very helpful for me. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely helpful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, does anyone have any questions? One. Yes. One last question for uh, hair removal. I'm a little bit on the fence for uh, skin type four. Should I propose this or should I not? Um, you can absolutely treat them. With hair removal? Absolutely. Yep. Um, do, uh, do a test spot. What will get you into trouble is if they PIH like no other. If they easily PIH, you want to bring your settings down. That's when you can do that triple pulse. Um, and it can just, they might need a few more treatments than lighter skin types. Okay, because the settings are lower, basically. Yeah, yeah, because it's the, the IPL is really attracted to melanin, oxyhemoglobin, and water. And so, so it's, it's attracted to all of that. So you want to make sure at least the hair is darker than the skin, the skin tone. Okay. Okay. But mm -hmm. these are yes. Great. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Well, there's other fun things that are coming. So um, like I said, advanced settings and then figuring out the defaults for the cooling. So then you don't have to change it all the time. Um, so there's going to be more and more stuff for these devices that are going to be even better. Great. Thank you so, so much. Absolutely. You can always reach out to me if you have any specific questions, anything that you thought of after this, you can always email me and I'm more than happy to address that and have a wonderful day, everyone. I appreciate you guys jumping on. You too. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.